exhibit to have a little chat about rainforests. Now I know that some of you are at school and some of you are learning from home but we thought this might be a fun place to come to learn a little bit about rainforests and the animals that we've got here at Paynton Zoo that would normally be found in the rainforest. So we're going to talk a little bit about what it's like to live in a rainforest, okay, about the different layers that make up a rainforest but also about the problems of living there as well, things like communication and hiding. Now one of the first things to talk about rainforests is actually about what they're really like. Okay, sometimes you'll hear people talking about them being amazing places, okay, like kaleidoscopes of colour. Okay, but in fact, rainforests, for people like us, when we go there, they can seem really green, really hot, and really uncomfortable. Even today in Croc Swamps, it's warm in here and it's humid. There's lots of moisture in the air. It's like when you get out of the shower and it's really steamy, it can be like that in the jungle too. Okay, so when people go to the rainforest, sometimes they can be a bit surprised. There's lots of trees everywhere, okay, but the wildlife, a lot of it, is up at the top, okay? Now, I'm not built for life in the rainforest, okay? My hands are not brilliant for climbing, okay? And I can't fly as much as I want to. So when we're stuck down on the forest floor, a lot of the animals are actually right up the top. Now, my favorite description is by Charles Darwin, that famous scientist with a huge beard. And when he saw the rainforest off the coast of Brazil from his ship and he was looking at it, he said it looked like a great, wild, untidy, luxuriant hothouse. What a brilliant description. Right, so we've come up with some fun activities to do with the rainforest. So we're going to show you four animals on the screen, which are all from Paynton Zoo. And we want you to try and spot the odd one out. Which one of these animals that lives at Paynton does not come from the rainforest? So you ready? Three, two, one, go. Now you're right, the lion is the odd one out. We've got Asiatic lions here at Paynton Zoo and they would normally be found in the forests of Gia, but it's not a rainforest, it's quite a dry forest. So you'd find them in Africa on the savannah and in India where, they, where our lions would live in the world, they'd be in dry scrubby forests, but they're not a rainforest animal, even though they're called the king of the jungle. They're the odd one out. Okay, and we're gonna try one last time. So we're gonna show you four animals that live here at Paynton Zoo. And I want you to try and guess the odd one out, which one does not live in the rainforest. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, now I'm sure you would have got this one right. It's the giant tortoises that don't live in the rainforest. We've got some big, beautiful giant tortoises here at Paynton, which come from the coral atoll island of Aldabra, but they don't live in a rainforest. The island they live on is quite dry. Good effort, well done. If you looked at the globe, if you looked at planet Earth, and imagine it wearing a belt, that's the equator, and tropical rainforests are found just in a narrow band, a belt around the equator. Okay, they need it to be warm all the time, Okay, and they need a lot of rain, the clues in the name. Okay, in a lot of rainforests it will rain every day, okay, but certainly it's never really a dry time of the year. Okay, now because they're found in a belt around the equator, that means there's no real winter, no real summer, there's no real dry season, but it also means that the days are almost the same length every day, that you don't get longer days in the summer and shorter days in the winter. When I worked in the rainforest, it got dark at six o'clock every day, and it gets dark really quickly. And there was always a clue that it was about to be that time of night, and that was that the cicadas would start to sing. There's an insect called a cicada that you find in the rainforest. And where I worked in Borneo, those insects, every day at six o'clock, used to start singing, and they can be really noisy. Okay, and that was a good clue, it was just about to get done. Now, to give you an idea of what it can be like in the rainforest, 
I'm just going to tell you a little story, and that is that years ago I did some research in the rainforest, okay, and I thought one day it would be a bright idea to go and take some pictures of the sunset. So I set off just before sunset into the rainforest and climbed uh, one of the trees that had a special ladder up it that led to a platform high up. This is like the ultimate treehouse. That canopy observation platform was 40 meters up in the air, so 12 floors up in the air, okay, and it looked out across the canopy, and I thought, this is the perfect place to take photos of the sunset over the rainforest. But what I had not quite remembered was that after sunset, it gets dark very quickly. So after I took my photos, and I climbed back down the ladder, noticing it was getting a whole lot darker, I got to the forest floor to discover that I could hardly see where I was going, okay? and I was about a mile away from my accommodation. Okay, it was a very scary walk home trying to follow, follow, follow and find this path through the rainforest. What a silly mistake, should have taken a torch. Right now, for a lot of animals that live in the rainforest, avoiding predators can actually be a really big problem. If you think about it, if you live out in the open, maybe out in the African savannah, then you can see a predator coming towards you from some distance, and maybe you've got a chance to run away. But in a rainforest, it can be difficult to see who's coming towards you, there's too many trees in the way, okay, but it can also be difficult to run away. So instead, a lot of animals in the rainforest will use amazing camouflage to hide from their predators, and maybe to hide from the prey when they're trying to sneak up on them as well. So if you look at different animals in the zoo, uh, that we've got here, you will see amazing camouflage. Now, one of my favourite examples of camouflage and using colour here at Painton is our red-eyed tree frogs because they look amazingly well camouflaged when you see them when they're relaxed and they're just sitting on a leaf. Okay, they can just disappear into the canopy just like any other rainforest animal. They can disappear into the foliage like any other rainforest animal. But if an animal comes too close, if they think that maybe a predator is about to spring on them, they can suddenly open their eyes and those bright red eyes are supposed to give the predator a fright and hopefully give them just a little moment just to hop away and to escape. Now I know for a lot of us at the moment it's difficult staying in touch with our friends. We don't get to see them every day, okay? And it can be really difficult to stay in touch. And do you know what? In the rainforest it can be just the same. Okay, for a lot of animals that are in the rainforest, being able to hide is fantastic. But that also means it's difficult to find one of the same species of you when you want a social life. Now, one of the most magic things about working here at the zoo is sometimes when we walk in in the mornings, you'll hear our gibbons singing. Okay, gibbons sing to stay in touch with other gibbons. So in the dawn, just after the sun's or just as the sun is rising, when the air is clear and their song is going to carry, they will sing from the treetops to stay in touch with other gibbons. Now, some of that is territory, saying, hey, stay away from my patch, and some of it is actually trying to let other gibbons know that they're there. Okay, so a lot, for a lot of animals that live in the rainforest, staying in touch, they may actually use sound. So things like our howler monkeys that live here at Paynton, or our gibbons, uh, they'll use sound as well to let other gibbons and other howler monkeys know that they're there. And even animals like frogs will use that too. Okay, so staying in touch when you're in the rainforest may be easier to do using your voice Okay, than just being. Okay, to a lot of us, the rainforest can seem like a whole world apart, like it's in the far off corner of the world and has no connection to our everyday lives. But actually, there are a lot of things that are in our lives that have got connections to the rainforest, that once upon a time would have been found in the rainforest. Maybe they were discovered there. So we're going to show you some pictures, and we want to see if you can tell us if they came from the rainforest or if they've got no connection at all. So you ready? We're going to show you some pictures, and you tell the person next to you, you see if you can work out uh, whether it's got any connection to the rainforest, or if you're on your own, you make a guess. Okay, so do these objects have a connection with the rainforest? Are you ready? Steady? Go! Okay, now I wish I could see the answers that you've got, okay, but we're going to go through them now. So if you were guessing the vanilla ice cream didn't have any connection to the rainforest, I'm afraid to say you were wrong. Proper vanilla comes from the rainforest. It doesn't grow on the trees as an ice cream, but the vanilla flavour in the best ice cream comes from vanilla pods like this. These are the seed pods of a vine that grows up in the rainforest. It smells gorgeous, okay, I wish you could smell it now, but vanilla comes from the rainforest. Okay, if you guessed a banana, I'm afraid to say, you were wrong. Okay, bananas uh, grow on palm trees, which we know, 
and originally bananas were found in the wet forests in places like Indonesia and Malaysia and the Philippines. Okay, so that's a rainforest plant. Did you know that a banana is actually a berry? I had no idea. Okay, if you guess that your chocolate bar has no connection with the rainforest, I'm afraid to say you were wrong. Okay, then chocolate doesn't grow on trees as chocolate bars, but it grows on trees as pods like this. This is a cocoa pod, and in the wild, in the rainforest, you'd find these growing on trees. And if you crack them open, then there's a weird goo, and then lots of little beans, and that's what's roasted and turned into chocolate, into cocoa beans. And the car tyre. Surprisingly, rubber originally came from the rainforest. People used to go out and cut grooves in trees, and then the rubber that ran out, they collected. And that was how we made rubber. And a lot of rubber now is made in factories, okay, but still some comes from the rainforest. Right, we're going to have a little talk about the way that the rainforest grows now. And that is, you may well have heard this, the rainforest grows and produces these different layers. Now, if you're looking on a picture, then scientists will show four different layers to a rainforest. But in each of those layers, the conditions can be different, completely different. Now, for animals that are down on the forest floor, the forest floor can be really dark. Just to give you an idea, for every 100 rays of sunlight that hit the top of the rainforest, then only one or two will reach the forest floor. It can be really dark. Okay, it can be quite a calm place to be, it's not very windy, okay, but the forest floor is covered in lots of dark, comp dark compost and rotten leaves and maybe the branches that have fallen down from the trees. Okay, but you've got the forest floor. Now the next layer up is called the understory and that's where all the tree trunks and the climbers and the shrubs are. Okay, so some people call it the shrub layer as well. Now conditions there are a lot like the forest floor. Okay, so it's still dark. You've got these huge trees rising up, and a lot of rainforest trees have got big buttress roots that spread out across the soil. Help them to stand up, but they also help them to get the goodness from the soil as well. Right, now the next layer we're going to talk about is the canopy. Now I know that for a lot of people, if I told you that the canopy is 40 metres up in the air, it doesn't mean a lot. But I want you to imagine that the rainforest is just like a multi-storey building. Okay? If you live in a house that's got two floors, so a ground floor, and a top floor where your bedroom is, then the rainforest is a bit like that, only taller. Okay, if you look at the rainforest, then the canopy, where a lot of the animals will be found, will be maybe 12 floors up in the air. Okay, maybe even more, maybe 15 floors up in the air. Okay, the canopy is high up, and that is where a lot of the leaves on the trees will block out the sun. But those leaves, okay, also mean that there's a lot of sunlight, and sunlight means fruit, so fruit and leaves gives a good place for the animals to live. Now, a lot of animals that live up in the canopy may never come down to the forest floor. They may spend the whole of their life living up on this 12th floor, maybe the 15th floor. Now, the very top layer of the rainforest is called the emergent layer. There are just a few trees that stick right out of the top of the canopy, and those are called emergent giants, okay? Some of them, the world record, is 100 meters in height. Now, to give you an idea, that would mean a 30-story house, a house with 30 layers. Can you imagine how long it would take you going up the stairs to get to the top of a house like that? And at the very top of those emergent trees, the giants that stick out the top, then you're going to be out in the baking hot sunshine, okay, being uh, blown around by the winds. But that's where you find just a few animals. Okay? And those trees have got all the sunshine they need, okay, but it can be quite a difficult place to live if you're an animal. Right, let's try another fun activity. So we're going to try and put animals from the zoo into the correct layer of the rainforest. So I want you to tell me where you think they would live in the wild. Now we're going to show you uh, a picture of an animal that lives here at the zoo. And I want you to tell me if you think they live in the emergent layer, okay, in the canopy, in the understory, or right down on the forest floor. But I want you to do it in a fun way. Now if you can't stand up, okay, if you're sitting down and you've got your uh, tablet on your lap, then you can stay where you are, okay, you can just tell me. But if you can move, then I want you to stand up and I want you to show me where you think those animals would be found in a fun way. So if you think that this animal we show you is from the emergent layer, okay, right up at the top of the tall trees, then I want you to put your hands up just like an emergent tree, okay? So you're the tallest tree in the forest. If you think that the animal is from the canopy layer where all the fruit and the leaves are, then I want you to make the canopy like this or like this, okay? So you can be the canopy, okay? If you think that the animal we're showing is from the understory, then be a tree trunk. So put your hands down by your side, spread your out, up, hands out like a big buttress roots. And if you think that the animal is from the forest floor, down in the dark, then down low, arms out, spreading out across the forest floor, just like the tree roots there. Okay, so you ready? Three, two, one, off we go.
Okay, we've got one final task for you. I was trying to think of a task that you could do that would show your family and your teachers how much you've learned about rainforests today. So I've come up with something unusual, and that is to do with food. I want you to show people what you've learned about the layers of the rainforest using food. So I want you to make a sandwich using different fillings to show the different layers of the rainforest. So can you remember that maybe the forest floor is dark? So I want you to use a dark filling for the first layer of your sandwich. You could represent the understory. Remember that's the tree trunks and the jungle vines. So you need something that looks like a tree trunk or like a jungle vine to, make, to remind people of what the understory is like. Up in the canopy, you've got all the leaves, okay, and a lot of the fruit that's produced there. Okay, so maybe you'd put something that was green or fruity in that layer of the sandwich. And right at the top, we've got the emergent layer. Sticking out the top of the canopy, there's the tallest tree. So you need to think of a way of showing people what the emergent layer is like. There's going to be fruit up there, okay? But maybe you can think of something different to show people about the different layers of the forest, from the forest floor and the understory and the canopy up to the emergent layer in a sandwich. So can you put that all together and show people what you've learned? Okay, I can't guarantee it's going to taste great to eat, but it'd be a good way of showing people what a rainforest is like. Now, thank you very much for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed School from the Zoo and learning about rainforests. And please, come and see us soon here at Paint and Zoo. Cheers. <laughs>